Hey, this is Gail with Burning of Naperville and welcome to December's Fat Quarter Club project. I hope you love it as much as I loved making it. It's a patchwork stocking using some pretty cool supplies that you might not have used before. One of them, hey, if you haven't used these Stripology rulers, you're missing out. So I'm going to show you how to use that. We're going to use some quilters grid to make perfect patchwork so we don't have all of these like little square like roadmaps to sew things together. It's going to be super easy using two inch squares. And uh, and then finally, we're going to make it into a really simple stocking. And of course, this is a great project to give as a gift, stuff it with candy, spa supplies, you know, all of the good things that your friends or your better half or maybe even your pet would want. So let's get started. Okay, so it's a bright, sunshiny December day here in my cutting room. And uh, let's look at what we need this month to make our cute project, which is a patchwork stocking. And uh, first, we're going to start off with our Fat Quarter Pack. Um, this month, it is a collection of homespuns. And uh, I hope you like it. I think they're super cute. Now, I do want you to know that we have a lot of other colorways in this at the store, but I picked the green and red because those were a little festive for the season. So we're going to start with this, and then I'm using Quilter's Grid. This is a uh, fusible item, and it comes by the yard, and each one of the squares on this is one inch. Now, a lot of people use these when they're making like pixelated quilts or they're turning a cross stitch design into a quilt. Um, I personally like using two boxes or four little boxes together to do a two inch block better than the one inch because that it, it's a little bulky and it's a little skinny. So we're going to be using two a two block setting and I'll show you how to do that but this stuff is is pretty easy to use and there's also a link to this in your handout so that you can get the right amount for however many stockings you want to make. So we're also going to be using this stripology ruler. Now these stripology rulers have a slot in them every half inch. This is the one that is a 12 by 12 block. And um, we're going to be using some small pieces. So I'm just going to be cutting at each little two inch increment here. And what's cool about this is you put it on top of your fabric and then you can cut this way. And then you can pick the ruler up and turn it and cut the other way without moving your piece. So you're going to see how easy it is to do that. But once we do the all of the cutting and, and everything, then... We're also going to be working with a stocking template, and this is a free project that you will get the link to in the handout. So let's, um, let's start cutting. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with this is here is my one of my homespun fabrics, and I'm just going to line this up just like this, and I'm going to get that folded edge just straight right here, just like that. And so then I'm going to move it over just a little bit so I can get a nice clean cut. And I want you to know with these homespuns, please don't try to cut them with the plaid. It's just impossible. Um, it's, it's a little higgledy-piggledy. So what you're going to do is you're going to make your first cut and you're going to slip your rotary cutter right down in that little slot like that. So all I'm doing is trimming that little edge off. Now I'm gonna cut a two inch strip, so I go over to the two, then I'm gonna cut another two, so I go to the four, and then six, and then eight, and then 10, <laughs> and then 12. Just like that and then I'm gonna take that piece and we'll just put that aside now you also you're getting six fat quarters so you want to reserve one of the fat quarters to make the back of your stocking but you're gonna have plenty of squares to to work with so you might even be able to make patchwork stocking front and back so now I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna turn this around here like so 
And I also like to start up just a little bit, keep my line straight, just so that I have, you know, clean edges on each side. So now I'm gonna start here just to get my little clean edge there. Then I'm gonna go to two, then to four, six, eight, and then that last little strip will just be a scrap. But look at this. So look how easy it was to cut those squares. So you're gonna do each of your fabrics that you want little two inch squares of and use this method. So, so easy. Okay, so this is our goal for what we're gonna make, this nice like little patchwork. And then this is another option. So instead of doing the squares, you can just cut two inch strips and then sew those together using the grid. But let's have a look. So I cut a piece of my quilters grid and this is actually 18 inches by 24 inches and that is going to be the size that I need to make the stocking because of course you have to cut it larger because you're losing bits when you are piecing together your patchwork. If you look at the back side here you can see those seam allowances so it's going to shrink a little bit so I made sure that if you have an 18 by 24 inch piece that that this is going to be large enough. So now I'm gonna turn this over so that I've got my fusible piece on top. That, that's the side that feels a little bit rough that's got the glue on it. And then I'm gonna start with my squares. And you know, I don't really have a preference for a pattern, but I'm just gonna start lining them up here like so. I'm just kind of alternating green and red Now the most challenging thing about doing this is getting this over to the iron. I've, you know, I've roughly laid this out, but really I'll be a little bit more persnickety with how straight they are on the grid when they get pressed on the iron. Okay, so here we are at our little piece here. And so one of the things that I wanna make sure that I do is line everything up very nice and get it into position just so. And then finally, we want to use a Teflon coated base for our iron so that when we get, when we put this on here, if we get little bits of our um, interfacing and the fusible stuff coming through, we won't injure our iron. We can clean up our Teflon base a lot easier. And actually when I'm at the iron like this, after I get it sort of semi stuck down, I'll trim my interfacing pieces off just a little bit. But works pretty well and it's certainly faster than having to do like chain piecing with these. Um, I mean, I like it. And then because these are stockings, having this interfacing back there really helps keep it a little bit stiffer to give it some shape so you can shove a lot of candy and treats in it. So here's our piece, all ironed. And when we turn this over now, we can see those lines. And so the goal is to fold over on the line and sew a quarter of an inch. And you're gonna go all one direction stitch, press, and then come back and do the other direction. So let's do that now. So we're here at the machine and I'm gonna fold right on the line, just like that, and stitch. And you'll notice that I'm using a quarter inch patchwork foot and that is necessary for this project to be able to get a quarter inch seam. If you're taking something a little bit larger, then of course your patchwork is gonna be smaller. But there's no need, you know, you wouldn't really need a dual feed foot or a quilting foot or anything like that for this. It's a pretty straight up, straight line piece.
And now I just am going to keep going row by row by row. So that was the first one stitched. Now I'm going to fold this piece down. Okay, so I'm putting the finishing touches here. I've sewn all of my vertical strips together, just like that. And now I'm gonna press it. I'm gonna press all of my pieces in the same direction. And then I'm gonna come back and do these rows here. Isn't it amazing how quickly I can press things when there's video involved? <laughs> okay, so here is the pressed piece. Now I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna go this other direction now and fold this in just like this on that line. And now we're gonna keep so, 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 so. to tell you I like to sew with my little pressed seams going in this direction. It tends to like be less bulky. So look at that. Perfectly awesome. All right, so I just have like a million of these to do and uh and then we'll cut out our stocking and make our stocking. All right, now it's time to see how cute this looks like as a stocking. Okay, so here's where you wanna, if you're gonna make your stockings have the patchwork on one side and then just a plain back on the other, you might wanna decide which way you want your stocking to face. And um, in this case, I want all of mine with the toe down this way, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my template on just like this. You might have also noticed that the template that I'm using is several pages taped together. That's because the pattern that I'm giving you the link to is it doesn't fit on normal paper. So if you wanna print this at home the same way I did by taping them together, let me show you really quick how to do that. We're gonna start by going to our little free pattern hand that's done by hand. We won't do that. You can do that on your own. But down here, there is a nice little stocking design. So what we wanna do is go to the print this penguin stocking pattern. And I actually want to download this because when we print this, I'm gonna show you how to enlarge it. So I'm gonna download this onto my, in just into my downloads folder. And then I'm gonna open up my Adobe Acrobat. And now I'm gonna open this design. And you can see on here, they want us to enlarge this by two. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my print button and then I want to select poster and I want to do the scale of 200 and now you can see there that's how they want this to go together so now this is going to print six pages that you're going to tape together and you just pick whatever printer you have at home or what you're going to use and print that out once you know how to do that and everything, we're back to cutting this out. So I'm just going to pin this down or I could use some uh, pattern weights and cut around with my rotary cutter. Now, we all have some extra fabric laying around for the lining. So we're going to cut two pieces of lining and then I'm going to use my red gingham check here for the backing. We're going to pin and sew these together, and we're gonna stitch using a quarter of an inch all the way around 
leaving an opening at the top. Then we're gonna do the same thing with this one, but we're gonna leave an opening at the top and then a little opening down here at the bottom of the foot. Now that these are sewn together, you're just gonna gently clip the curves so that when we turn it inside out, it'll be nice and smooth. And do that to both pieces. And now what we wanna do is we wanna turn this one inside out or outside, right side out, or however you wanna think about it. And I'm gonna shove this one just in here. And before I get too much further on this, we wanna make a little tie. Now we can make a tie to hang by the mantle out of ribbon, or we can make it out of fabric. So we're gonna pin this in place. And I have like an extra strip here of our material. I'm probably gonna take about six inches of this. And I'm gonna press this in half like that, and then press, press, press and stitch down both sides. All right, so I made our little hanging tab and that's gonna go right in the back here. So I'm gonna fold it together like this and shove it in <laughs> my little stocking. Lining everything up there. So I'm just gonna pin and sew the top using my quarter of an inch seam allowance again. And also when you're pinning this, don't forget to line up your seams to make sure that all of your bulk gets distributed evenly around the top of your stocking. All right, meet you back here in just a second. Okay, so that's been stitched. Now I'm gonna turn it inside out like this, and you have kind of something that looks like a long tube. Then you're gonna, <laughs> it seems weird, but I'm gonna go ahead now and grab the toe of my stocking, and now I'm pulling it all the way out. Do, 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 ta-da. And now, just use my hand to get that toe nice and pretty. And the heel, there we go. And now look at that, so that's our lining. And now, all we need to do, and you can do this a couple different ways, is you can simply sew this up by hand or i mean let's be honest everybody this is a stocking people just want the candy out of it unless you're making a priceless heirloom you can probably do this by machine so i'm just gonna fold this over take this over to the machine and stitch and I've got pink thread in my machine so that you can see what the top stitching is going to look like. Okay, so the final stage, you can see here, there's my little, well, without the fuzz, there's my tiny little stitching that I did on here. So I'm just going to insert this lining into my stocking. And I have something cute to hang by my mantle. If I had a mantle, I don't have a mantle. So I'll probably hang it on the hall tree at work. <laughs> and then I suppose if you're fastidious, 
you would probably want to do a little bit of top stitching right here. I'm just gonna press mine. I think it looks pretty cute. I got a lot of these to make. I'm, I'm gonna make these as my holiday gifts and then stuff them with fun things. So I owe you another little um, tip here. So if you wanted to make a stripe stocking rather than the checkerboard, you would just cut some strips. I'd say you probably need about 18 inches, 18 to 20 inches in length. And you can line them up right on those lines for the two inch pieces. And then you just line one after the next and you're only gonna have to sew your vertical rows. So that might be an option for you. Well, what do you think? Do you like our stocking? I can't wait for somebody to fill mine. You know, Santa, Chris, you know, somebody like that. What would you like in your stocking? You know what is good in a stocking and fits perfectly well? Bernina feet. That's right. And they're on sale 25% off now through the end of December. So don't forget to take advantage of that. And also, I don't want you to forget to check out other tutorials like this one or some of our Bernina love stories right on our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment, and subscribe. But enjoy this month's project and hopefully I'll see you in the store. Bye-bye.